Well, I know you were mixing last night. Yeah. Uh, but did you have? I mean, how how big a crew did you have? And I mean, how much? Did you do everything? Did you do? You did everything. <laughs> I'm not joking. He did everything. He did everything. He did all the editing? No. Kind of. I mean, there's no, no, no. I know absolutely not. I had an editor and a sound editor. I think what they're saying is when we made the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When we made the movie on set, it was Jim. Jim was the set. Well, who? you had a cameraman. No. Jim was the cameraman. There's no lighting setups, no makeup lady, it's no kind of like what we're doing right now. <laughs> it's kind of like what we're doing right now, but... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. He was the guy. Okay, so um, he was he was the guy. <laughs> I mean, they always say it takes a lot of money to make movies. I guess when you don't have a big crew, it's not as expensive. When it's not as expensive, it's again this 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 was born out of practicality. The mm -hmm. first night we shot was Christmas Eve, two thousand nine, at my parents' house. I didn't know how to operate a camera. I didn't know how to take it out of the box. Right? I I I'm not a photographer. I don't. I certainly don't know about lighting or anything like that, but I was just so tired of saying, someday, someday I'll make a movie, someday I'll learn how to do all this. And I just started doing, starting with what I was comfortable with, which is helping my family on that night understand the imaginary situation that they were going to be asked to act, and then, have, and then trusting Sierra with the story and kind of letting her move through them. I started working there and then picked up my camera and started to shoot a bit. And, and, uh... So did you, yeah. so... Do you feel a lot, you know, obviously you learned a lot yes. from doing this. Um, would you do it the same way again? I mean, if in your next film, are you doing it similarly? Similarly. In that... What if somebody came to you and said they wanted to give you like a ton of money? For the movie? To do, to do another movie. How do I get to do it? It's, you, it would have to be your way. have to be my way. Yeah. Without exception. Otherwise, I'm in the same position I am with with acting, but I'm trained as an actor to pick up something and if I don't quite respond to it, find a way to make myself mm -hmm. care, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To find a way to express it. Somebody comes to me and says, uh, you know, there's this great movie called G.I. Schmo, and uh, it's terrific, and we think you're the guy for it. Mm -hmm. I, all the, all, I, I'm not the guy for it, and I'm certainly... I'm not going to bother with that, and, and, and they wouldn't want me to, is the, is the real answer. But you got a lot of other people involved, the other cast members in it. Can you talk a little yeah. bit about them? Or? Cool. Um, yeah, we've got so many great actors in this movie. Heather Morris is in from Glee. Mark Pellegrino, who's one of my teachers, too. He's from Lost and Supernatural. Mm -hmm. You know Mark who played Jacob on Lost? I heard that, yeah, but yeah. I didn't yeah. There's a few other, you know, um, people that you might recognize, but besides them, it's a lot of non-actors like his family, who turned out to be really great you actors. Yeah, family in it. Yeah, really? his whole family, like when we shot it at Christmas That'll time. Interesting. I don't know, but they're, they're terrific. great. Can't wait to see that. Yeah. They keep us honest, you know? Yeah, it's it's been interesting, like, Working on it, um, just and <clears throat> now I'm gonna now watching it and having everybody else watch it, just wanting to be very sure that you can't pick out like who's the actor and like who's the non actor. Wanting you know, so. and you can't. Mm. Everybody's that honest. Mm -hmm. Everybody's wow. that honest. These two do things, and I know them inside and out. Scott's my best friend since I'm ten. This is my soulmate, you know. So, the fact that I'm impressed by what came out of them is a real testament. It's just how how hard they worked, how how willing they were to just mm -hmm. get into a situation that is it's a tough situation to act, and it takes not just great people, but it takes terrific actors. These guys are so good, and one of the things I want to do with the movie is. Half the people in the movie have never been in front of a camera before. And they're so beautiful and they're so good and unique. And they have all the world to offer. Nobody out there is biting just yet, you know? Mm -hmm. Almost nobody in the movie has an agent. Almost nobody. Maybe four people. Mm -hmm. And a cast of 40. 
and they're all terrific. So good. And I just want, you know, to along with giving them, along with my movie needing what they had to offer, they deserve to be seen. Mm -hmm. These people do. Speaking about being seen, yeah. um, after the premiere, I mean, what are you going to do about getting it distributed? Or have you already got that in place? Or what's my my manager and I talked about this last night. We want to go festivals and we want to screen it, and you know. There was there was some talk from a pretty big corporation that was interested in the idea of purchasing it to put on on their uh, kind of watch on demand mm -hmm. cable site, and it excited me just that somebody was excited about that. But the more I think about it, I don't want to put us in a position where if I want to screen the movie for to raise money for you someday or something like that. I have to call somebody up and say, hey, can I borrow my movie? You know, once you sell your movie, it's their movie. Yeah. Same way once you sell a car, it's somebody's car. I don't think I want to do that. I don't think I want to sell it. And to be honest, this isn't the kind of movie that's smart to buy for anybody. It's just... I well, guess it's we'll a very, very personal. It's very. Personal. I think, yeah, we'll just see what happens. I think it's revolutionary. I really do. The way... Jim went about creating the story and shooting it and putting it all together. It's like, I don't, I, there's no movie like there, at least that I've seen, like with this philosophy and that's gone, like there's, it's just, it's reminiscent of like some great movies from the past in a way that it, it's, that, but it's, it's just art. keeps coming it's to mind. It's so, <laughs> that's, that's my hero. It. Oh, really? <laughs> that's my hero, you know? That's yeah. my hero. Yes. He, he has a credit in the movie as a special mm -hmm. thanks at the end of it. Oh, you know? cool. I think what Jim has done is so beautiful and so important and so enriching for anybody to watch, anybody who's interested in movies or interested in Jim or interested in life. It's so poignant and just art. There's so little um, art out there in this town and artists who are openly that and I just encourage anyone to take interest in this and and find a way to see it or get in contact with Jim somehow or just because I think it it's life enriching and it's really um, very beautiful, and I'm very proud of him. I can't wait to see it, actually. Yeah. Oh, let me ask you one last thing, though, about the music. Um, Aubrey Van Stratton did the music. Yes, he did. And can you talk a little bit about that? Because um, I meant to ask that earlier. I told him, uh, he's in the movie, too, by the way. Oh. He's terrific. <laughs> he's so good. Yeah. Uh, he and I got to know each other in London, and I said, this guy's an artist, man. This guy's a real deal artist and there's something I can learn from the guy if I pay close enough attention and I did and we like we get together and we just mm -hmm. we start going and after I wanted him to be in the movie I saw him play music and I said man you know at some point in time we might need some music for the movie maybe you'd like to do it and he said of course now I didn't know that usually the composing process is months weeks something like that but apparently it is we don't do anything in this movie the way other people do it because we recorded the music on Monday and Aubrey had never seen the movie and he came in and brought some instruments and we sat in the sound room and I showed him the places I want music and he watched for about 14 seconds and goes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. can I go record mm -hmm. and he goes, are you kidding he said no 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 you know three four takes the most beautiful appropriate wonderful touching music Aubrey was like the perfect because like he said the whole theme of you know the way that Jim's done this whole thing he kind of just sort of picked up on after I watched it with the music and I was like oh my god it's so beautiful <laughs> it's so and he's just standing out there he's like yeah you just gotta you know I'm, the, it's already there you just gotta hear it and translate it and I'm like oh my god you're right <laughs> yeah <laughs> He kept saying that. He said, the, he said, the music's already in the movie. I just yeah. have to let the movie tell me what it is. It was like, so perfect. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Well, I can't wait to see it. We're glad you're going to see it. Yeah. And it's been great to work with the people I love best. My family, family, my friends, yeah. and, and people, you know. It's people been great. Again. 
So I know you can't say anything about season four, but Try can't me. you say something about season four? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can. Good. Now we have to be careful, but what do you want to know? Well, you know, the thing I really want to know, which I know you probably can't tell me, is what's hap what's going to happen to Hoyt and Jessica. I think I can talk some about it. Okay. Um, which is that, you know, you saw us get together, you saw us have troubles, you saw us get back together. And now we're in a relationship together, living together in a relationship. And all the things that happen in real relationships happen in this relationship. And they're magnified by the fact that we're different creatures. Is that okay. Vague okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty vague. Well, what I mean is, let's but, say rather than telling you what happens, imagine this. Imagine you fell in love that hard with all the hope, all the expectation, all the sacrifice, the excitement that comes from being in love that much. And you found yourself uh, washing dishes together. Suddenly. Right? You go from a purely experiential thing to a day-to-day -day kind of reality. Mm -hmm. Can this thing stay alive the way it did in the beginning? We'll let the season answer the question, I guess. It, with, with the added attraction of her being a vampire. <laughs> What's not to like? What's not to like? And you can't tell us anything about the doll, can you? No. What do you feel when you see the doll? I don't know. I just wonder why it's sitting laying on the floor there. And then I saw that picture of you with the doll. Oh, I'm like, what is Jim man. holding the doll for? <laughs> Maybe the doll He's is holding the doll. me. Mm. Mm. Interesting. The doll is very important. And the doll... The doll's got something to do with the season. <laughs> <laughs> That no is way! <laughs> the, doll, the doll is... Really? One thing we know about Alan Ball is that nothing is ever there for no reason. That's correct. <laughs> it's always, you know, if that mug right. was sitting on a table, it had a significance. Somehow. You might see the mug two seasons from now. <laughs> You're like, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. get it. That's the mug. Yeah. Exactly. No, that doll, that doll is uh, not your regular doll. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's not your everyday quote on that. Yeah. Um, they're even talking about season five already. Great. They said there's going to be 13 episodes, which would be great. Outstanding. Yeah. We all love each other on that show. We well, I was going to ask you that. I mean, you hear that over and over and over. It's a family. It's a family. It's a well, family. It's no Everybody joke. love each other. Yeah. It's the only professional environment that I've been in where nobody is secretly kind of wanting to be more important than the collective, you know? The leads, and I think starting with Alan and then putting Anna as sort of the head of a show, and all that, all the weight of the show is on that, you know, a young kid, which is like 25 years old or something. And, and she does it so gracefully, and she does it with such uh, energy and consideration for all the people around her that nobody's gonna step on the true button and try to be an asshole, or you're not gonna last, you're not gonna last. Mm -hmm. She and Stephen, all the way down to the man, to the woman. Everybody is for everybody and everybody's for the show before they consider themselves. And mm -hmm. I think, I've said it before, if we didn't have the subject matter, but we had that group of people and that attitude, give us a story about anything, we're going to be one of the best shows on television. Well, um, we think it is. So. Great. Me too. Okay. Well, thank you Great. very much Thanks for inviting out. me in yeah, and for letting me... Hopefully, tape all of this. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you at the premiere of the Yay. new film. We've got to find a way to get Lynn on the right side of the, of the fence, on the proper side where she belongs. Send this to Alan Ball. That's right. <laughs>